Okay, hi there. Welcome to a slightly different revision video this time. If you are writing exam questions on development economics, it is always great news to put in one or two little tidy, interesting contextual examples to lighten the theory a little bit. You don't have to be a subject expert on only one country, but just knowing a little bit of stuff and having an example to hand can make a big difference to the quality of your answer. There are many development traps that uh, countries have to overcome, particularly low- and middle-income countries, ranging from inadequate infrastructure, primary product and primary export dependency, uh, the debilitating effects of conflict and corruption, weaknesses in human capital, very important, as are savings and foreign exchange gaps for countries, uh, the environmental impact of natural capital depletion, the consequences of high levels of income and wealth inequality, and a lack of con competition and contestability in markets. So having some examples to hand can make a big difference to understanding how countries are trying to tackle and address some of these development barriers. Here's a terrific example from the fast-growing country of Rwanda, which has just opened its first fertilizer plant. It's going to start producing later on in 2019. Crucially, uh, Rwanda is going to produce probably up to up to 100,000 tonnes of fertiliser each year. It's been heavily dependent, as many low, uh, least developing countries are, on imports of fertiliser for their farm sector. Now Rwanda will produce their own fertiliser and it's anticipated it will also make a surplus for export. A classic example of manufacturing helping to overcome primary product dependence but also tilting the balance of trade in this country's favour. Tourism is an issue of vital importance. You take countries like uh, uh, the Gambia, for example, 20% of all the jobs in, uh, in the Gambia are tourism. It's the highest percentage for any mainland African nation. But here's a great example in Tanzania. So you just need a couple, exa couple of examples of countries that are heavily reliant on tourism. And tourism in Tanzania is growing. They need to develop the human capital. They need to train hotel workers and managers. And they need the they need the infrastructure in place in terms of transport and sanitation and, and other aspects. But tourism is growing in Tanzania. It's a key source of foreign exchange reserves. And uh, last year, um, nature reserves, parks and nature reserves, boosted earnings by over seven percent. Uh, it's now nearly worth well nearly two and a half billion dollars to the Tanzanian economy. Great example. Of tourism. This is quite stunning, is it not? This is the, the new solar uh, power plant in Morocco. It is the world's biggest solar panel plant at the moment. It's the size of three and a half thousand football fields. It can be seen from space. It's so big and it's going to be generating enough capacity of electricity to, with the potential to power I know, two cities the size of Marrakesh over one million homes. Solar energy in Morocco is a fantastic example to use of countries developing their own energy capabilities. And of course, in theory, they'll, be able to, they'll then be able to export surplus energy from North Africa, perhaps to Southern European countries. Fantastic example of, of development and also economies of scale. Uh, infrastructure is obviously a, one of the barriers to development for many countries. Uh, here's a really good example. Djibouti has just opened uh, an upgrade to its port. Absolutely fantastic example. Better ports, uh, more capital stock here, obviously, allows for more and faster shipping of, of goods from East Africa. Uh, increasingly, East African countries are becoming uh, sizable, scalable producers in the world economy. They're diversifying their production, offering more products, more different goods and services. You need the port capacity to be able to handle it. Here's a good example of how Im improved infrastructure can reduce the cost of trade and tries to deepen Djibouti's and East African countries' connections and integration into the world economy. Back to energy. Uh, here's a really, really good example. In Ethiopia, one of the fastest growing countries in the world, has just opened the first waste to energy power station just outside of Addis Ababa. The first green electricity power station in Africa. Um, really important idea in terms of developing a waste to power energy plant. Superb example for any essay on sustainable growth and development. I love this example. 
So the, you know, the idea of moving away from primary product dependency. Kenya is pretty much in and, in and around Nairobi, is pretty much East Africa's tech hub at the moment. Uh, Nigeria is West Africa's tech hub. Uh, and here's a great example of foreign direct investment. Microsoft is, is setting up a regional technology development center, actually in both in Kenya and also in Nigeria. Classic example of foreign investment leading to higher value added industries. Uh, you can then bring in the idea of external economies of scale, agglomeration effects, uh, the impact on the Kenyan startup uh, community, for example, and obviously a way of improving uh, their capabilities and their competitiveness going forward. Another example of foreign direct investment, I love this example, again from Rwanda. Uh, the country has signed a deal with a Chinese firm Mango to set up a garment manufacturing plant in the, in the Kigali Special Economic Zone. So China has gone for this kind of approach, Rwanda doing the same, setting up a special economic zone, offering tax incentives and uh, and uh, infrastructure and, and buildings ready to move into. Designed, of course, to attract inward investment, uh, increase GDP, increase formal employment in the labour market, particularly amongst women, and then increase exports from Rwanda into other African countries and beyond. This uh, great example, 7,500 jobs, um, uh, potential for skills transfers here, uh, making clothes for Rwanda and exports. Great news initially, uh, obviously, the, the long-term issue is whether robots, automation, etc., will reduce the demand for labour in these kinds of industries, whether Africa will suffer premature deindustrialization. But some positive news there. Oh, this I love this example again from Rwanda. <laughs> uh, development progress can be measured in many ways. The HDI, of course, is one of your go-to um, aspects, education, income and health. But also multidimensional poverty comes into the equation. Access to electricity is crucial. It's one of the aspects of multidimensional poverty. And now 51% of Rwandan homes have electricity. That's up five times from just a decade ago. About a third of homes are on the national grid. But in interestingly, and here's a, a kind of subtle variation, a lot of homes in Rwanda now and in other African countries are using a mobile power um, based on solar often, in other words, they're using off-grid power uh, networks. The, the growth of private power networks, often driven by solar, where you generate your own power within the local community. and Potentially, you can feed that back into the grid, but it means you don't necessarily have these huge infrastructure needs to power a, an entire country. Fantastic example here on the financial side. How can financial markets um, catalyze, speed up, contribute to development. Angola, that you may well have associated with uh, primary product dependence, uh, the vast dependence on oil as a, as a source of exports and GDP. Well, Angola is opening its first stock exchange for companies to sell shares and to make public shareholders in companies. Partly this is linked to privatisation. So the Angolan government is going heavy on privatisation. I think they're privatising over 70 companies in the next few years and so if you're privatizing companies they will need to raise capital by issuing shares on the stock market so africa's second largest oil producer has set up a domestic stock exchange again the importance there of diversification but the financial sector needs to grow its capabilities as well as other industries high-tech healthcare in kenya this is a fantastic example can you see the picture here where women are wearing orange solar-powered GPS bracelets. They're shown in the picture. This allows community volunteers to find them, and therefore it makes it easier to bring uh, health teams uh, into very remote areas for regular checkups and things, immunization and, and other aspects. Really good example of high-tech healthcare. Uh, debt relief. Here's an example. The DRC, of course, is one of the most highly indebted countries in the world. When you think about external debt, external debt is owed to external uh, creditors. It could be governments, it could be foreign investors. You need to make a distinction between external debt owed to overseas agents and the national debt, which is government debt, but that could be owed to both domestic as well as external people. But here's a good example. The DRC 
has agreed with China to restructure its debt, which was, I think, more than $2 billion in 2017. Here, what's the development point here? Typically, debt restructuring in the past has been done with the IMF and with the World Bank. Increasingly, some of the most heavily indebted countries in the world are negotiating debt relief with individual countries, in this case, the DRC with China. Now, there could well be strings attached, but it's a good example to have. Love this example uh, in terms of, again, the farming industry. Increasingly, China has invested in Africa to extract, if you like, the raw materials, the copper, uh, the zinc, the rare earth and other things. Well, there seems to be a little bit of a sea change now. Increasingly, China is now engaging with trade deals with Africa to sell, to sell it the food that China will require going forward. So a new trade agreement here, Kenya is going to become the, Africa's first country to export avocados to the Chinese market, a market of over a billion, well over a billion people. Kenya, of course, is already Africa's biggest avocado exporter. Great example of comparative advantage. It's got a thriving flower export sector as well. So just having these little examples can make a big, big difference to your SOs. Crucial question here is the price at which Kenya uh, sells the avocados. What are the terms of trade? Do they benefit both countries? A few more slides. Like this example, this is uh, the Kenyan loan. Uh, so quite a few African countries now have got bullet trains, fast high-speed rail. Morocco, there's a, a high-speed rail link between Rwanda and Tanzania being announced. But here's Kenya. Kenya borrowed, was building an $8 billion um, railroad, high-speed rail. Uh, it turns out it's the world's most expensive railroad. Uh, Kenya has borrowed six, uh, sorry, borrowed, uh, I think it's four billion, I said not six, four billion from China to complete this rail system. That's a great example of a country borrowing lots of money uh, and therefore adding to its external debt. In theory, of course, uh, the infrastructure will pay off and this will be a productive investment for Kenya. The risk is that if you borrow from a foreign government or foreign markets, if there's a fall in the Kenyan currency, the, the shilling, the shilling depreciates, the cost of servicing that debt become really high. So a good example of, of, of reliance on external debt being a, a barrier to future growth. Terrific example here in Ghana. They've launched the world's largest drone delivery service. A fleet of 120 drones They've created four drone ports. That's the future, presumably. And the idea of these drones, of course, is to, is to fly medical supply deliveries to 500 clinics across Ghana. This is the future, is it not? The use of drone technology to get um, much needed healthcare and other products to, to the areas of most need. It's, it's a fantastic example of new technology having, a, having an impact on basic development outcomes. Two more slides, two to finish. Here's a really terrific example of how legalization of, of cannabis, so marijuana, for uh, medical use in, um, uh, in Canada is leading to trade opportunities. Uganda is sending its first shipment of medical marijuana to Canada. It's worth 160 million US dollars. And it's a really good example of how uh, African countries, in theory, can benefit from the shift in policy in advanced nations. Sometimes a, a policy decision in one country can open up a trade and investment opportunity in another. Interestingly, quite a few other African countries are looking to, to follow Uganda's pathway here and grow, move a lot of production into marijuana because they can export it to developed countries where it's becoming legalised. And finally, a groundbreaking aspect of microfinance. You know, a lot of farmers in countries, again, we go back to Rwanda, um, have limited access to credit, limited access in particular to insurance, which uh, makes them vulnerable to the effects of climate change and extreme weather. Here we go. Rwanda is launching an agricultural insurance scheme, which gives finance and credit to farmers and offers some protection against crops and livestock 
uh, if they're lost from disease and from extreme climate. Microfinance, stock markets, all that kind of stuff, financial markets have a key role to play in promoting development. The acknowledged source for all of this is James Hall's absolutely superb Twitter feed all about Africa. A quite stunning daily reminder of the beauty of a wonderful continent. Please do, if you can, put a few examples in the comments section. We'd love to have some examples of development in action. What's your favourite go-to applied example for the exam? Share it with people so that uh, we could all, all enjoy them. Hope you found this useful and good luck with your development economics questions.